What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. So today I'm going to do something that I don't normally do and I'm not very good at it. So I'm going to put it out there right now. I don't know how you guys do this stuff. This is, I've never liked doing this stuff, but I'm, today I'm putting decals over top of the Jag. Now, the decal is going to be over top of satin white. It does stick fine. Uh, it does not going to come off, sticks well enough. This is a non-air release film. So a bit of work is involved, especially if we're not using any kind of solution. And I'm not using any kind of solution, I'm putting it on dry. Could I use a solution to put it on? Yes, but I'm not going to just because I don't need to. And this is just how a lot of guys do it. So the problem with doing that is you can get air bubbles in it. And the air bubbles can be very hard to get out or difficult to get out if you don't have anything or any way to push them out. That's what the solution underneath is for. So that helps push everything out, similar to window tint, right? Window tint is not air aggress. There's no air release on it. So you use, a, you use a solution to actually squeegee out all that air. Again, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Some of you might not like it, some of you might like it. But again, I'm probably doing a bunch of things wrong here and my technique is not going to be the greatest. So I'll admit it all right up front. And, but I do know how to do it and get it done nicely. So I've done the other side already and we're going to do this side right here. That's it. So I don't, I didn't plot this out. A friend of mine did. And it, this film comes on, well, you can use 3M pre-mask. Pre-mask is basically like your transfer paper. It's this stuff right here. That's that the sticker sticks to. Now, it actually releases from the sticker a lot easier. So that way, when you go to put the sticker down on the car, the decal down on the car, you're able to peel off the pre-mask without peeling off the decal. Makes sense, right? Behind it is just you know your regular waxy paper, and that releases really easily. Actually, this, this paper that they have on the release liner releases very, very easily right now. When we're doing this, we're going to break this down into sections, okay? And with paper, it doesn't stretch. So we have contours to the car can make things a little bit difficult. What you're going to want to do is you're going to take your image of where this is supposed to go and line it up. You line it up to exactly the way the image looks. Now there's going to be some extra, there's a little extra in here and there's a little extra by the taillights. That's so we have a little bit of play in the back section. In the front section, we don't need that because we're not cutting it. We, don't, we can't cut it off here. This is the door, right? It's going to be flat here. So when you're near the ends of the panels, there's usually a little bit of extra play with the film so that way you can line it up. These decals don't always or shouldn't always come to fit exactly to the millimeter or less. Some do. St racing stripe kits sometimes do that. And that makes it more of a pain in my opinion. I do like to have the little bit of extra vinyl so that we do have that play to play around with. It helps get it lined up really nicely. Plus it's going to move slightly when we're doing this. So again, I'm just using tape, masking tape to hold it down right now. This car is not magnetic, so there's no magnets. And we're going to break this down into sections. Now, what you do is you, you start at one end and you kind of work to the other end. I'm going to start at this end so I can keep the tail light area nice and straight and that's got to line up because that's like a more exact position where it meets the tail light and that, so that spot right there. And then from there, what I did is I just kind of wiggled it up and down to get it to more or less the top of the body line. It's about a quarter of an inch below the top of the body line and then everything else should line up. I was checking the eye and where the door falls with the eye to so make sure it's the same on the other side. Now, again, it's going to overlap the door handle and things like that. So we're going to have some trimming to do afterwards. It's not a lot. And then we just roll our extra around the edges. So let's do this. So I'm probably using the wrong kind of squeegee because I'm just using a, a regular color change squeegee. But you're going to use a bit of a harder edge squeegee. So that way you can actually push the vinyl out. I'm just going to use the buffer side because I don't want to cause any damage. It always worries me. But I see you guys do this all the time with uh, with the actual hard edge of the squeegee. All right, so what we do what we do here is we peel off one side, leave it like this, then we cut off our backing paper or release liner. 
I'll use my tool for that. I want to make sure that there's no dust kicking around. Sometimes it doesn't cut the nicest. And again, when we're prepping the surface, we're just wiping it down with isopropyl alcohol, nothing fancy. All right, so I'm gonna take my decal and pretty much put it right back in the same spot that I had it. I don't wanna pull on the film too much. And we're gonna start squeegeeing this as evenly as possible. This way, we uh, don't leave any air behind. Now again, we're, we're doing this on paper, right? So this gets a little tricky when it comes to doing this. Now I'm gonna do shorter passes because I wanna make sure that I'm being thorough, first of all. And longer passes, you're gonna put down too much at once. We don't wanna do that. We wanna work this as nice and evenly as possible. If we put this film down, know how I'm holding it up. If we put the film down, it's just gonna trap air. So we're using the squeegee to actually put the film down. We don't wanna be putting the film down or letting it rest on top of the car because they're just gonna trap air. So I'm pushing very firm. This part's easy. It's that part over there that's way more difficult. Perfect. That should be good. I'm not gonna do anything just yet. I'm gonna go, we're gonna go to the other side. So I'm gonna leave all this here and I wanna anchor this. It's good to trim out some of the release liner so that way we don't have so much release liner there or just the extra around it, release liner and, uh, and the uh, pre-mask. So it's good to get rid of a bunch of it. It does help. So now what we gotta do is you can do this from like, if we can keep going this way and we can keep going this way. I did the other side from top to bottom. I don't know exactly if it's better to go top to bottom or left to right or whatever. It just, I did whatever felt right. All right, so now we fold this side back. And I don't wanna take off all of it. So I'm just gonna take off some of it. Because I want to make sure that we're not leaving a ton, a, leaving a ton of extra or, un, or uh, sorry, exposed area. We don't want to leave too much exposed area. We just want to have some. Okay, so I'm going to start here. This is where the body line flows. And this is where, you know, it just makes sense because it's going to go down here first on the angle that I have it. This is going to touch eventually, right? So we're gonna position ourselves and get ready. Now, it stays fairly rigid, obviously, with the, with the, with the transfer film or the, the pre-mask and the release liner on it. So we just can hold it really nicely. Even the pre-mask is very uh, rigid as it is. And I don't wanna leave too much of the release liner on because that's also gonna make it difficult as well. The release liner will actually inhibit my ability to squeegee this nicely. Just want to make sure the key isn't anywhere nearby. It's actually in the car. And I don't want to push the button on the door handle because it'll pop through. You mind grabbing this? This vinyl, you know, we can reposition this. We can pull it back a little bit. Just be gentle. Keep in mind, you know, the paper does have a bit of give and it does slightly stretch in contour. So you know, we don't wanna be changing it too much. We wanna be keeping everything natural and, and in, its, in its state where we placed it originally. So again, always pushing firm. Would this be any easier with a solution? It probably is. I'm just not using one. So I'm just having a look here to see where the end of that is, okay? So again, Look at this body, this roll. We're gonna roll this, okay? Very important, because this helps you kind of stretch this around. It's almost like it's curling over the panel right now. I teach this a lot when I uh, do the workshops. And you kind of roll this body line. 
So I'm getting into the kind of the pre-mask, sorry, the uh, release liner area there. Again, we're gonna start working at the top. We don't wanna forget. We just work this a little bit at a time. And we're always watching where it's making contact. So I'm getting air here for some reason. It's not completely flawless when you're uh, when you're doing this, but sorry, it's not completely uh, foolproof. I can actually just take this off. Now again, any of you who have suggestions on doing this any easier, feel free to drop it in the comments below. I'm always open to the suggestions and ideas. Again, this is not something that I do very often, so I'm no pro at it. I do know how to work and manipulate vinyl. That's about it. But again, all I know is that you don't want air in it. So I think I got some air right there. I'm just gonna peel it back slightly. And you can kind of see it a little bit sometimes gotta be air or it's in the pre-mask I think it's just the pre-mask use our finger a little bit So like, I'm not actually sure if I should be using relief cuts or not using relief cuts or if a solution is absolutely necessary. All I know is that, you know, I've seen a lot of people do this without using anything underneath it. And again, it does make it a little bit more challenging. It's just, if you take your time, it's not that big of a deal. Like when the pre-mask is wrinkled, it's a little bit weird too, because we, we have some creases in the pre-mask and it becomes a little bit difficult to squeeze you over sometimes. You're not sure if you're gonna cause a wrinkle or something. Usually it doesn't cause anything, but. Super thorough, right? I'm taking my time here, because we can see that tension. This is what I'm gonna do right here. This is what I did on the other side. I'm gonna put a relief cut right between the teeth or the mouth. Just be very careful. It's gonna separate these two areas. It makes, it makes a big difference. So I can actually just finish this off. Perfect. And then we should be able to do most of this. What I'm gonna do right here is trim a little bit more. It's still resisting me. There we go. Now I know that this does come in a, there's like a plastic pre-mask, a more stretchy style pre-mask. So again, I'm gonna put a relief cut right here. Perfect. Maybe even a little bit more over here. There we go. And then we should be good. So I'm just gonna hold that from touching anything. And I'm just gonna fold it back slightly. there I think the paw part is pretty easy from what I remember from the other side so again that's the longest part of it right there now and now we'll do the paw perfect it lines up really nicely to the other side very happy with it
always pushing very firm. It's a little tiring actually. What's that? So now what I'm going to show you is how the pre-mask comes off. So we're just going to take our time and we're going to go over it first. Just have a look, make sure everything looks solid. Once we take the pre-mask off, it's a little bit more difficult to reposition. It'll still be very difficult to reposition at this point because we've laid it like this is. So if you have like a little bit of end to move, you can do it while the pre-mask is on, but that's about it. So right now we're just going to start. We're going to start right here and just take our time. Now that I've done that, I'm going to divide where I've put my relief cut here. We'll take off the bottom. Removing the pre-mask is a little bit difficult if we do this with like a, a solution underneath. So we're gonna have to actually take, take our time even more and let it dry and let it cure. Because if we try to do this, we're gonna run into issues. Obviously, it'll start to move. We don't want that. So I'm gonna show you how I deal with some of these air bubbles. It is going to involve some lifting, which is unfortunate. But as long as we put it back down in the right spot, we'll be fine. I did have to lift it a little bit on the other side. So I do have some up here. Um, also, what I'm going to do is weed out this last little bit right here. I think there's two spots. Yep, they forgot on both sides. So a little bit right here. And I'm just using Vivid's air release tool. It's kind of like a weeding tool. Just be super careful. I don't blame them for missing it. It's really hard to see. There we go. And we we'll just take our time because we want to make sure that the plotter actually did plot it out properly. Trying to hook an edge. It's a little difficult to do. There we go. Okay, that's good. I know back in the day, some guys were doing color changes with this kind of stuff. But again, you can use a solution underneath it. You need something, especially on a, on a hood, for the most part, you need multiple people. One or the other, you're gonna need something, some kind of an assistance. Doing it, doing it dry is, is madness. I, you know, I've heard of guys using baby, baby powder and stuff like that too. Uh, that is a possibility. Again, that's not something that I'm familiar with or ever used. Trying to make sure it's mint. All right, so let's get these ones up here now. So I've got a little bit on the end here. So you can see it's not really changing anything as far as me doing this goes. It's keeping everything, you know, nice and straight. As long as we're not stretching it in the wrong kind of angle or being too aggressive with it, just take your time. This is the, you know, this is the delicate part of it. Finesse, you gotta finesse it. Just lift that edge slightly. It'll lock it in right, even right up to the very edge.
All right, so now we're gonna got some of the air out and fix it up a little bit. Now we're going to just trim out some of the areas. So I want to show you how you can kind of pull back some of these edges and fix them up a little bit. Again, what you're trying to do is avoid anything in the very middle or areas that are not accessible. It would be very challenging to uh, get any air out if that's the case. Again, if you have a keyless or, or sorry, proximity sensor, keep your key away from the car. You push the button here and we're going to tear the vinyl. So one thing to keep in mind with a door handle like this, Teslas, they move, they pop open. All right, we're gonna get in good here. I can trim this off right here. A little air in the corner, let's get that out. I can take this around the back slightly and then we're gonna start trimming off all the wheel well area and tuck around the door, tuck around the door handle, just take our time. So this will take two seconds down here. Don't want to get any wrinkles there, which I did. There we go. When it comes to uh, doing this, I see a lot of shops, they don't even tuck it around the edges or anything like that. I mean, I guess it depends on uh, the, the decal size, sometimes you're limited, like with stripe kits, for example, like I was talking about, you're limited to uh, coverage just because that's the way they, they did the kit. All right, that's all good. I'm just gonna finish the taillight area right here and then we'll open the door up, do the door handle area, all that fun stuff. give you guys a walk around later on of the car. So when it comes to the door handle area, we're just gonna take our time, work it around a little bit. Perfect. So now I can actually get in here a little bit better. If I don't open the door soon, it'll retract. So we'll just leave that, leave that out. And then we're gonna just add a touch of heat, not a lot, just contouring the film around the edges, tuck it away nicely. So again, guys, I'm not perfect at this as far as you know speed and efficiency goes. Uh, it is effective though, however, and we got it done in exactly the same place as the other side of the car, and it looks fantastic in the end. So it'll be, I think you'll be very happy. Again, if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you guys wanna see more videos, don't forget the subscribe button. Again, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Take care.